The terrifying legend from 1875 of the Red Sun and the terror it caused. Horror Story Scary Story The day began like any other in Crestwood, a small town nestled in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains. The townsfolk went about their daily routines, oblivious to the looming threat that would soon shatter their peaceful existence. It was the year 1857, a time when the United States was still finding its identity amid political and social turmoil. Jacob Carter, the town's sheriff, was patrolling the streets on his horse, greeting the familiar faces he encountered along the way. He was a tall, sturdy man with a graying beard and a stern but fair demeanor. He had lived in Crestwood all his life, and he knew every inch of the town and its surroundings. He loved his job, and he took pride in keeping the town safe and orderly. He stopped by the general store, where he exchanged a few words with the owner, Mr. Jenkins, a portly, balding man with a friendly smile. Jacob bought some tobacco and a newspaper, and then continued his patrol. He glanced at the headlines, which reported on the latest developments of the ongoing conflict between the North and the South. He shook his head, wondering how long it would take for the country to heal its wounds. He rode past the church, where he saw the pastor, Reverend Jones, a thin, pale man with a pious expression. Jacob nodded at him, but the pastor did not return the gesture. He seemed preoccupied, as if he had something on his mind. Jacob knew that the pastor was a devout man, but he also sensed that he had a dark side. He had heard rumors of strange rituals and practices that the pastor conducted in secret, but he had no proof to confront him. He reached the edge of the town, where he saw the schoolhouse, a modest wooden building with a bell tower. He heard the children's laughter and chatter, and he smiled. He had a soft spot for the kids, especially for his niece, Sarah, who was one of the students. She was a bright, cheerful girl with curly blonde hair and blue eyes. She was the daughter of his brother, James, who had died in a hunting accident a few years ago. Jacob had taken her in, and he treated her like his own daughter. He decided to pay her a visit, and he dismounted his horse. He tied it to a post, and then walked toward house. He opened the door, and he was greeted by the sight of the teacher, Miss Wilson, a young, pretty woman with brown hair and green eyes. She was standing in front of a blackboard, writing some arithmetic problems. She looked up, and she smiled when she saw Jacob. Good morning, Sheriff Carter, she said. What a pleasant surprise. Good morning, Miss Wilson, Jacob said. I hope you don't mind if I drop by for a minute. Not at all, Sheriff. You're always welcome here. Is there something I can do for you? I just wanted to see how Sarah is doing. She's my niece, you know. Of course, I know. She's a wonderful girl. She's right there, in the front row. Jacob followed her gaze, and he saw Sarah sitting at a desk, holding a slate and a chalk. She was wearing a blue dress and a white bonnet. She looked up, and she beamed when she saw Jacob. Uncle Jacob, she exclaimed. You're here. She jumped from her seat, and she ran towards him. 
She hugged him, and he lifted her up. Hello, sweetheart, he said. How are you? I'm fine, Uncle Jacob. I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too, Sarah. How's school? It's good. Miss Wilson is a great teacher. She teaches us a lot of things. I'm glad to hear that. Are you having fun? Yes, Uncle Jacob. We play games, and we sing songs, and we read stories. That sounds wonderful. What stories do you read? We read fairy tales, and legends, and myths. They're very interesting. Really? What's your favorite one? Sarah thought for a moment, and then she said, I like the one about the red sun. The red sun? Jacob asked, puzzled. What's that? It's a story that Miss Wilson told us. She said it's an old legend from the Native Americans. They believed that once in a while the sun would turn red and that would mean that something terrible was going to happen. They said that the red sun was a sign of the end of the world. Jacob felt a chill run down his spine. He looked at Miss Wilson, who nodded. It's true. Sheriff, it's an ancient prophecy. The Native Americans called it the Red Sun of Doom. They said that when the sun turned red, it would unleash a great evil upon the earth. A evil that would destroy everything in its path. A evil that no one could stop. Jacob frowned. He didn't like the sound of that. He was a rational man, and he didn't believe in superstitions. But he also knew that the Native Americans had a deep connection with nature, and that they had a wisdom that was beyond his understanding. He wondered if there was any truth to their legend. He looked at Sarah, who was still holding his hand. She looked at him with innocent curiosity. Uncle Jacob, do you think the red sun will ever come? She asked. Jacob forced a smile. He didn't want to scare her. Of course not, Sarah, he said. The red sun is just a story. It's not real. The sun will always be yellow and it will always shine on us. Don't you worry about it? Sarah nodded, but she didn't seem convinced. She looked at the window, where the sun was shining brightly. Okay, Uncle Jacob, she said. But what if it does? Jacob hugged her, and he kissed her forehead. Then we'll deal with it, Sarah, he said. We'll deal with it together. We'll always be together, you and me. Nothing will ever separate us. Nothing will ever harm us. I promise. He hoped he was right. He hoped he was not lying to her. He hoped he was not lying to himself. He didn't know that his hope was in vain. He didn't know that his promise was doomed to be broken. He didn't know that the red sun was coming. He didn't know that the horror was about to begin. The horror began that night when the sun set in a blaze of crimson. The townsfolk of Crestwood watched in awe and fear as the sky turned blood red, casting an ominous glow over the land. They felt a surge of dread, as if something terrible was about to happen. They remembered the legend of the Red Sun, and they wondered if it was true. 
Some of them prayed, some of them panicked, some of them hid, and some of them tried to act normal. But none of them could escape the terror that was unleashed by the red sun. The first sign of the horror was the strange behavior of the plants. The flora of the Appalachian Mountains, which had always been lush and green, began to mutate and twist into grotesque shapes. Vines snaked through the windows and doors of the abandoned houses, wrapping around the furniture and the walls. Trees pulsated with a sickly life force, their branches reaching out like tentacles. Flowers bloomed with unnatural colors, emitting a foul odor. Plants seemed to have a mind of their own and a malicious intent. The second sign of the horror was the appearance of the creatures. The fauna of the Appalachian Mountains, which had always been diverse and harmless, began to transform and deform into monstrous beings. Birds grew scales and claws and screeched with a piercing sound. Wolves grew horns and wings and howled with a demonic voice. Bears grew spikes and eyes and roared with a savage fury. The creatures seemed to have been corrupted by the red sun and a bloodthirsty hunger. The third sign of the horror was the madness of the people. Townsfolk of Crestwood, who had always been friendly and peaceful, began to lose their sanity and humanity. Some of them became paranoid and violent, attacking their neighbors and friends. Some of them became delusional and suicidal, harming themselves and others. Some of them became possessed and cultish, worshipping the red sun and its evil. The people seemed to have been infected by the red sun and a dark force. The horror spread like a plague, and soon the town was engulfed in chaos and fear. Plants, the creatures, and the people became the enemies of each other and of themselves. The town became a hell on earth, and no one was safe. Jacob Carter, the sheriff, tried to maintain order and protect the town, but he soon realized that he was fighting a losing battle. He witnessed the horror with his own eyes, and he felt his courage and hope fading. He saw the plants invading the houses, the creatures attacking the animals, and the people killing each other. He saw the red sun looming over the town, and he felt its evil presence. He tried to save as many people as he could, but he also lost many along the way. He lost his friends, his colleagues, and his fellow townsfolk. He lost his horse, his gun, and his badge. He lost his faith, his reason, and his will. But he did not lose Sarah. She was the only thing that kept him going. She was his niece, his daughter, his life. He loved her more than anything, and he swore to protect her at all costs. He managed to find her at the schoolhouse, where she had been hiding with Miss Wilson and a few other children. He was relieved to see that they were alive and unharmed, but he also knew that they were not safe. He decided to take them to the church, where he hoped to find refuge and help. He gathered them in a wagon, and he drove them through the streets, dodging the plants, the creatures, and the people. He reached the church, where he saw the pastor, Reverend Jones, standing at the entrance. He looked pale and gaunt, 
and he had a strange gleam in his eyes. Reverend Jones, thank God you're here, Jacob said. We need your help. The town is under attack. The red sun has brought a horror upon us. We need to get inside the church. We need to pray. Reverend Jones smiled, but it was not a friendly smile. It was a twisted smile, full of malice and madness. Welcome, Sheriff Carter, he said. Welcome to the Church of the Red Sun. Welcome to the end of the world. He raised his hand, and Jacob saw that he was holding a knife. He stabbed Jacob in the chest, and he laughed. Welcome to the horror, he said. Jacob gasped, and he fell to the ground. He felt a sharp pain, and he saw blood. He looked at Sarah, who was screaming. He looked at Miss Wilson, who was crying. He looked at the other children, who were terrified. He looked at the red sun, which was mocking. He felt a coldness, and he saw darkness. He closed his eyes, and he died. The horror continued, and the town was doomed. The red sun had brought a great evil upon the earth. An evil that destroyed everything in its path. An evil that no one could stop. Thank you for joining us for this spine-tingling story. We hope you found it both thrilling and thought-provoking. If you enjoyed this video, please consider participating in our channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing it with your friends. Your support goes a long way in helping us create more engaging content for you. Goodbye, and may you always tread carefully in the world of the unknown.